Perdiccas was a general in Alexander the Great's army and participated in Alexander's campaign against Persia. Following Alexander's death, he was regent for Alexander's half-brother and intellectually disabled successor, Philip Aridius. As such, he was the first of the Diadochi who fought for control over Alexander's empire. In his attempts to establish a power base and stay in control of the empire, he managed to make enemies of key generals in the Macedonian army, Antipater, Craterus and Antigonus Monophdamus, who decided to revolt against the regent. In response to this formidable coalition and a provocation from another general, Ptolemy, Perdiccas invaded Egypt, but where the invasion founded his soldiers revolted and killed him. Family background According to Arian, Perdiccas was a son of the Macedonian nobleman, Orents, a descendant of the independent princes of the Macedonian province of Orestis. While his actual date of birth is unknown, he would seem to have been of a similar age to Alexander, Heteros, as the commander of a battalion of the Macedonian phalanx, heavy infantry, Perdiccas distinguished himself during the conquest of Thebes, where he was severely wounded. When Hephaestion unexpectedly died in 324 BC, he was appointed his successor as commander of the companion cavalry in Chiliac. Also in 324 BC, at the nuptials celebrated at Susa, Perdiccas married the daughter of the satrap of Media, a Persian named Atropates. Subsequently, he held an important command in the Indian campaigns of Alexander. As Alexander lay dying on the 11th of June 323 BC, he gave his ring to Perdiccas, Diadochus. Following the death of Alexander, his generals met to discuss what should be their next steps. Perdiccas proposed that a final decision wait until Alexander's wife Roxana, who was pregnant, had given birth. If the child was a boy, then Perdiccas proposed that the child would be chosen as the new king. This meant that Perdiccas would be the regent and effectively the ruler of Alexander's empire until the boy was old enough to rule on his own. Despite misgivings amongst the other generals, most accepted Perdiccas' proposal. However, the infantry commander, Meliger, disagreed with Perdiccas' plans. Meliger argued in favor of Alexander's half-brother, Aridius, who he considered to be first in line of succession. The infantry supported this proposal with Meliger's troops willing to fight in favor of Aridius, regent. Through the partition of Babylon a compromise was reached under which Perdiccas was to serve as regent of the empire and supreme commander of the imperial army. Aridius and the unborn child of Alexander's wife Roxana were recognized as joint kings, while the general Craterus was officially declared guardian of the royal family. Perdiccas effectively held this position, as the joint kings were with him in Babylon. Perdiccas soon showed himself intolerant of any rivals, and, acting in the name of the two kings, sought to hold the empire together under his own hand. Alexander the Great's second wife, Statera, was murdered. Perdiccas had Meliger arrested and murdered. Perdiccas' authority as regent and his control over the royal family were immediately challenged. Perdiccas appointed Leonatus, one of Alexander's bodyguards or somatophilax, as satrap of Hellespont and Ephrygia on the western coast of Asia Minor. However, instead of assuming that position, Leonatus sailed to Macedonia when Alexander's sister, Cleopatra, widow of King Alexander I of Epirus, offered her hand to him. Upon learning of this, in spring 322 BC Perdiccas marched the imperial army towards Asia Minor to reassert his dominance as regent. Perdiccas ordered Leonatus to appear before him to stand trial for disobedience. But Leonatus died during the Lamian War before the order reached him. At around the same time, Sinani, Alexander's half-sister, arranged for her daughter, Eurydice II, to marry the joint king, Aridius. 
Fearful of Sinane's influence, Perdiccas ordered his brother Alchaetas to murder her. The discontent expressed by the army at the plan to murder her and their respect for Eurydice as a member of royal family persuaded Perdiccas not only to spare her life but to approve of the marriage to Philip III. Despite the marriage, Perdiccas continued to firmly hold control over the affairs of the royal family. As regent and commander-in-chief, Perdiccas saw it as important that he consolidate Alexander's empire. A key step in achieving this was to conquer Cappadocia which still remained under Persian rule. However, Antigonus I Monothalmus, the Macedonian satrap of Pamphylia and Lycia, was unwilling to support Perdiccas when in 322 BC Perdiccas successfully invaded Cappadocia. When Perdiccas ordered Antigonus to appear before his court, Antigonus fled to Antipater's court in Macedonia. To strengthen his control over the empire, Perdiccas agreed to marry Nasia, the daughter of the satrap of Macedonia, Antipater. However, he broke off the engagement in 322 BC when Olympias, mother of Alexander the Great, offered him the hand of Alexander's full sister Cleopatra. Given the intellectual disability of Philip III and the limited acceptance of the boy, Alexander IV, due to his mother being a Persian, the marriage would have given Perdiccas a claim as Alexander's true successor, not merely as regent. Civil war and death as a result of these events and actions, Perdiccas earned Antipater's animosity, while Antigonus had reason to fear Perdiccas. Another general, Craterus was also unhappy at being ignored by Perdiccas despite his important position within the army when Alexander was alive. So Antipater, Craterus and Antigonus agreed to revolt against Perdiccas. In late 321 BC, Perdiccas had sent Alexander's remains to a tomb that had been prepared in Aegae in Macedonia, the town where Alexander had been proclaimed king. However, when Alexander's remains arrived in Damascus, Ptolemy, the satrap of Egypt, was able to persuade those accompanying the remains that Alexander had wanted to be buried in Egypt. So Alexander's remains were brought to Alexandria in Egypt. Perdiccas regarded Ptolemy's action as an unacceptable provocation and decided to punish Ptolemy by invading Egypt. Perdiccas' most loyal supporter was Eumenes, satrap of Cappadocia and Paphlagonia. Leaving the war in Asia Minor to Eumenes, Perdiccas marched to attack Ptolemy in Egypt. Eumenes managed to defeat and kill Craterus in a battle that took place near the Hellespont. Perdiccas reached Pelusium but failed to cross the Nile. A mutiny broke out amongst his troops, who were disheartened by Perdiccas' failure to make progress in Egypt and exasperated by the severity of his discipline. Perdiccas was assassinated by his officers sometime in either 321 or 320 BC.